Why don't you come on over and uh, have you shown the soup stone to everybody, Tom? Has everyone seen the soup stone? I have not seen the soup stone. Take a look at the soup stone. It's beautiful. It was made by a local artist. Her name is Wendy Lehman. And uh, she's a stone carver. And I said, you know what? We need a stone that we can put in the pot that we can uh, cook all day. It's not going to break apart. That's going to, it's nice and smooth. But it needs to say something. It's the non GMO stone. So imagine us, we're, some of us are travelers. We all traveled here. Imagine that all we have is this pot with some water. That's all. We don't have all this other stuff. Just imagine for a second. And we want to eat organic, healthy food, and we don't have any. All we have is this stone we carry around. The non-GMO stone, because pretty soon there's going to be genetically modified stones. No, I'm joking. I, apparently, I don't know, the USDA might be working on genetically modified stones, but um, uh, until they come out with it, let's just hope that's just imagination. But this is a non-GMO stone, so it's not going to crawl around. It's not going to bite you. It's not going to give off something that you didn't anticipate. <laughs> it's not going to, you know, make your kids sick or future generations sick. And hopefully we can pass this stone down to other activists in other parts of the country. In fact, if there's a big West Coast stone soup, which there might be in Washington State when they had their GMO labeling initiative on the ballot in this year. Everybody know about that? Washington State's going to have a GMO labeling ballot initiative like California did. And if it passes in Washington, it's going to force action at the federal level. So we got to support that. Maybe we'll send this stone out to Washington State later this year and they can have a stone soup out there. All right, so uh, Tom, it's yours, man. You, you want ready to add it? Johnny's late, and I think he'd be all right if that's adding the stone. Oh. All right, everybody. Can I hear it for our chef? This is Johnny Moto, Tan DC. You want to say anything? No, he needs to wake up. Go stand by the pot. <laughs> All right, so the way we're going to do this is we're going to give your ingredients to the food prep. All right, all right, we're going to have the story, and I just, you can go from there. So we're here with our stone, our magical, magical soup stone. And the story of stone soup has been around for a long time. It's a, uh, it's an old, it started as an old European folk tale. And it basically follows this, this weary traveler who's traveling around in a, in a time of great scarcity. And he walks into town looking for some food, looking for some place to sleep. A simple request of a traveler. In a time where the idea of hospitality has passed because of this scarcity, everybody turned him away. He went from door to door and they told him there's no place to stay, there's nothing to eat, Move on to the next village. Move on to the next county. We can't take care of you here. So after being passed from door to door, from house to house, finally, he said, you know what? Don't worry about it. I'm gonna take care of myself. I'm gonna go and make some stone soup. So, Word gets around that somebody has food, that somebody's making some food. There is food to be in the village. And he goes in the center, he goes right in the center of town, and he pulls out his pot, just like our large pot right here, and he starts boiling the water. And people start coming around and they're salivating, not knowing what's in the pot, but just knowing that there's food on the horizon. And after there's a lot of people around, just like there are all you guys here now, he pulls out his sash and reveals his magical soup stone. And he puts that stone inside there and he boils it for a while. And he starts to breathe in the aromas. And he starts a mmm and ah about that stone. And he tastes the, 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 the broth from the magical stone. And he looks around at the people that are, that are salivating at the idea of food and he says, you know, this stone soup is wonderful, but what would be even better 
is stone soup with a little cabbage. Now that would be delicious. And well, one of the villagers that had come by thinks to themselves, well, I've got a little bit of cabbage that, you know, I've been hiding away, but I've got a little bit of cabbage there. And so they go back and get their cabbage and they add it to the pot. And again, our traveler tastes of the broth and says, mmm, this is really good, you know, and stone soup with cabbage, but, you know, I had stone soup with cabbage and a little bit of spiced beef once. Now that was stone soup fit for a king. And so it goes, and the, and the butcher says, well, I've got a little bit of spiced beef, and he goes back and gets it. And soon it goes on with potatoes and carrots and leeks and onions and spices and salt. And this village that was living, in, that was living in, a, in a time of great scarcity on their own, that was hoarding the little bit that they had and yet going hungry all the same, contributed what they had. They all collaborated and, add some, and added something to the pot. And in the end, as a result, everybody was fed this amazingly delicious soup that they had put together, all, to, all together they put it to, they'd, had, they'd made this amazing soup. And whereas before they were living in scarcity, they were living in hunger, when they worked together, they were fed. When they worked together, they were fed. And this is a metaphor for building power. When we all work together, when we all bring the skills that we all have, we bring that dedication to whatever issue that we're working on, we, we gain strength when we build those alliances. And today that's what we're doing, and we're doing that with this soup. But there's also another metaphor going on here. Because right now, we live in a, in a time of great scarcity once again. Although it seems like there's great abundance, you go to any corner store, it seems like there's food to be had. There is a scarcity of healthy food. There's a, there's a scarcity of both access and knowledge about healthy food. And to one, one extent, that starts right here at the FDA. At the FDA Center for, for Nutrition, for Food Safety and Applied Nutrition, which is why we're here, because without labeling, without knowledge about what, what is healthy and what isn't, what we can eat and what we should not, we are actually living once again in a time of great scarcity. So this stone is representative of that. It's representative of the food deserts that exist all across this nation, of both access and knowledge. And we're gonna start with that. And everybody here is collaborating. And not only are you adding it to the pot to feed yourself, we are bringing this healthy food from all over the East Coast, from all over the country, to bring that healthy food, to bring that, that knowledge about what is healthy, to, to support that access of healthy food, we're gonna be contributing, we're bringing that to the stone, we're putting that in that pot. So we're making, we're making some medicine today. We're making physical me medicine and we're also making etherical medicine. And we're all contributing. And we're gonna bring back, we're gonna have, we're gonna taste of this soup, we're gonna fill our bellies with this soup, this collaborative soup, with food that's come from all over. And we're gonna bring that back with us to wherever we've come from. And we're gonna bring back knowledge, we're gonna bring seeds. We also have GMO-free seeds, and it's very important that we can that we that we grow GMO-free, that we save our seeds, that we pass down heirloom seeds to the next generation. So we were going to be also exchanging seeds, that's, that's just as important. We're going to be filling our bellies with this food, and we're going to make ourselves some stone soup! So I'm going to walk over, and I'm going to add the stone. And after we've added the stone, we're going to invite everybody who wants to to kind of line up here. You don't have to necessarily line up, but one by one, we're going to have people come up and speak to why they've come to the FDA, where they've come from, what they're contributing to this stone soup, and speaking to the message of what, of what they want to tell the FDA. So if anybody wants to come up behind me now and be the, be the, be the first to speak about where you've come from. Actually, maybe I should say where I've come from. Yeah. I've come from Asheville, North Carolina. Before that, I came from California, where I worked on Prop 37 and coordinated 50 events in support of GMO labeling out in California. 
We led marches in San Francisco. We led rallies all over Northern California. We hosted speakers and film screenings. We went to farmers markets and com community events, educating people about GMOs. We hung banners from every single freeway we could find. And, uh, and we did our best, and we educated, si we got six million votes in California, which is the most, that, most, most signatures that we've ever gotten for GMOs by far. Six million votes in California. We had, we had news articles in every single major paper across the country about the issue. People became aware. And as a result of what we did there, we now have labeling initiatives in 37 states across the country. So I brought a little bit of that work that we did out there, that labor of love. We brought it to Asheville, North Carolina. We've got a movement for a GMO-free Western North Carolina to preserve our seed biodiversity. And we're working on getting GMOs completely banned from Western North Carolina. Yeah. And now I've come here with this soup, with this magical soup stone. And we're gonna start off this stone soup. Yeah. All right, who's, who's next? Who's next? Who wants to come and speak to why they, where they've come from? Got it? Come on now, grab some food. Come on up and tell us about your food. There goes the stone. It's going to the chef. Wait, give it to the chef. Give it to the chef, that's the procedure. You want it to, go, go to the chef, yes. Grab the food that you brought, or a little bit of a re something representing it. Come over here by the PA and tell us why we're here. Who's first? Who's first? You ready? All right, let's get the live get the live stream going. People on live stream world, thank you. Share the live stream. Okay, here you go. Introduce yourself. Hello, hello. Hello. <laughs> I am Aaron Weston from Hartford, Connecticut, Greater Hartford area. Uh, we teamed up with Food and Water Watch, uh, GMO Free CT. We worked on getting a bill passed in Connecticut. It's voted out of the committee, so that's the best that we can do for now. Um, we were at the LOB 13 hours, some people were there 16 hours, worked on it for months and months and months. And um, started with six people at Panera Bread and ended up 100 and some people at the LOB. So no effort is too small, so get it in. Each carrot counts. <laughs> so take care of yourselves all. Peace to all. Namaste. Good morning, brothers and sisters. My name is Deborah Cohen. I'm from Wethersfield, Connecticut, one town south of Hartford. I'm here representing GMO Free Connecticut. I'm here representing Occupy Hartford, and I'm here representing what really needs to be done on behalf of all the other people who couldn't be here. Um, I think the main reason why I'm standing here talking to you right now is because I cannot get over the sheer arrogance of Monsanto thinking that they are in any position to own seed. No one owns seed. Seed is given to us by our mother. Our mother is the only one who can give it to us. My anger, my absolute rage at the FDA and particularly at Michael Taylor is that they are perpetuating Monsanto's ability to do this to us. It has to stop. Um, evil is evil. Michael Taylor, I'm not usually in for character assassination, but you are evil because you are supporting it. Um, have a wonderful day, everybody. Oh, and one more thing, if you'll allow me. Please go home and boycott absolutely everything that has any GMO ingredients. Thank you. So I just have a request from the chefs. 
If you please don't step behind the tables. That's like the kitchen area. Don't step in the kitchen. If, when you bring your food over, don't just put it down the table. There might be a clean spot where they're where they're cutting. So just hand it to them, okay? And um, yeah, that's all. And for photographers, uh, please let people know if you're moving into the kitchen area. We want you to film the kitchen, but just give them a heads up. Let them know you're behind them because they might have a knife in their hand. <laughs>